Hi, my name is Sean. They call me Slug. My name is Ant. And we are Atmosphere. And right now, we are in Los Angeles at Amoeba, and this is what's in my bag. The temperature's rising, but it's colder than hell. I never feel alone when I'm alone by myself. I try to sing along, but I don't know what you said. And I'm not suffocating, I'm just holding my breath. I would like to talk about this thing. I'm not sure exactly what they decided to call it, so I'm gonna tell you what I call it. This is the ultimate Prince Sign of the Times box set. Uh, probably my favorite album by Prince, who is also my favorite artist. This album uh, had a huge impact on me. When, you know, Posthumous, they released this huge thing with all the sessions, all the versions. There's too much music in here. Adore is my favorite song on this album. When I was a kid, because I was a kid when this album came out. Adore was so smooth, silky, playerific. <laughs> Making love, like I was too young for that and it really stunted my growth. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. So. Thank you, Prince. Rest in peace. Right, this is going to be the short version of that. So this is Richard Pryor's Wanted. White people! <laughs> them motherfuckers sit in bunches, too. You notice them all over here. In case some shit start, they be ready. As soon as the show's over, we run right outside into the car. Right, time's up. Let's go! Now, I have all his stuff already, but mine's beat up scratching it and stuff like that. I love this album. This is my favorite artist. Like he was saying about his. This is just all around my favorite artist. When I was a kid, his vulnerability made me feel like I could be vulnerable. And yeah, yeah. And try to be funny if, if possible. I said, my monkeys are there. <laughs> they died. He said, what? You mean the ones that used to be in the trees? I said, damn. I was gonna eat them too. De La Soul. In this world of lust that I have for you, it's true. true. I know I love you Every one of their albums is amazing. This was the debut album. This was the album that changed a lot for me. It, it, it just kind of opened up a, a, a broad idea of how you could identify within hip hop music, you know, prior to this, you know, I, I had consumed so much music that, that, that kind of pushed my identity towards being very um, overly confident. And this album allowed me to go, oh wait, I can just be myself. Always pushing that we formed an image, there's no need to lie. When it comes to being plugged one, it's just me, myself and I. We were just recently talking about this, yeah. this record in specific. I'm, I'm fully that. oversimplifying that concept right now, but, but bottom line was this was the first album in a series of albums that would come out later from other artists that just kind of reinforced that you could be who you are 100%. You don't have to fit a certain archetype to, to be proud of what you can contribute to this culture. My favorite album by De La Soul is De La Soul's Dead, but I will admit this album probably had the larger impact on me. I mean, after this album came out, I was like drawn on my pants and <laughs> I stopped brushing my hair. You know, it was just like, it's a good time to be a kid when this came out. Agree. Rest in peace, plug two. Another two, one of my favorites, probably one of my favorite movies of all time, The Thing. And John Carpenter, and he usually did his own music too, but this one is Ennio Morricone. I love all his stuff. Anything he has, we both collect his stuff. Anytime we see his name, we buy it. But this is special. And uh, there's a little bit of synthesizer stuff in here that I have uh, I tried to emulate at times. And uh, it's, 
is a, still to this day a great movie. Mm. Clear. Clear. Ah! Matter of fact, during the pandemic, you could rent out a theater for like a hundred bucks, and then they had a certain amount of movies you could watch, and you could just bring whoever only your your little bubble or whatever. So we rented it out, and this, they played this on the big screen. I hadn't seen it on the big screen since I was 13 years old when it came out. So anyway, that's my little tidbit on that. Make sure you yeah. show your 13-year-old the thing, okay? If you have a 13-year-old, play the thing for them. Yeah, they, they might turn out all right. You gotta be fucking kidding. Speaking of John Carpenter, I found a lot of enjoyment in this album. I like listening to music, specifically with my children, and then asking them to describe to me what is happening in the song. So they listen to the song and then they'll be like, oh, there's elves jumping out and attacking deer or something. You know, like, that's not an actual quote. Um, <laughs> but uh, this album did that for me as well. Like I could listen to this and I got a lot of visuals off of this. This, I don't know much about it actually, um, but I know that there's a drum break on it. I saw it here for a dollar. And my career is based on dollar bin records. I've been sampling from dollar bins uh, since the late 80s. So I could always use another drum break. You know what track the drum break is on? Oh no, I bet I could do it like this. You can probably look at it, you can find it. It's. Song three. How can you tell just by looking at I'm it? I'm just making it. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, that was really convincing. <laughs> down, down to the bottom. I'm going to pick this. Uh, it's kind of cheating. These are friends of mine. This is the Grouch and Merce. Oh, I did a joint on there. That's part of why I'm picking it, because Ant does have a feature on this record. He, he put a beat on here. The oh, is right. The Sony is dice will come through. Let's enlight, enlight up, enlight, enlight up. What, what is the word for a feature when you're a producer? A placement. <laughs> Anthony has a placement on here. Um, That's if you get paid. But, but also the reason <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be on this record and I wasn't because the song that they wanted me to be on was just disgusting. I, I couldn't. Oh, bring it was myself. the one I did. It's the one that Anthony made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just couldn't bring myself. I don't have to, morals like that. To rap about that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think it's a pretty great record. I, I enjoy it. it was, I was happy to see it on vinyl out there because I have not actually been had the chance to, to get this on vinyl yet. So I'm gonna buy that to go with my Merce watch. That's <laughs> Merce bling right here. That's what that is. You know what? Ice T's original gangster. Man, you can try, but you never understand this. You can try, but you never understand this. Try and try, but you never understand this. The lifestyles of the rich and infamous. I love his earlier stuff from the 80s, but this was, I think this came out in 90, 91 or something like that. But this record took it over the top to me. They have a lot of little songs that connect bigger songs, and I don't know, it's pretty great. I think mostly it was done by DJ Aladdin, produced most of it, and this. The scratching is amazing, the beats are great, all the topics are pretty great. Like, it's my favorite record of Ice T's. Um, and it was just, you know, and, I, and at the time, they didn't, they released a promo copy that just only had a few of the songs on there. I don't think it all, all the songs originally ever came out on vinyl until they did this. So it's good to have this. Mind over matter. That was one of the ones I had on tape. and. This was at a time when everybody was openly influenced by each other. And what I like about this is you can hear influence on here from the Bomb Squad, but you could oh, also yeah. hear the stuff that was theirs starting to show up in other art. It, it was just, the influence was becoming very familiar. It was very, it was almost like everybody was friends, which I think when you look at from 1988 to about 1993, you can look at that span in hip hop and just see how everybody was learning from each other. It was almost like, oh, that's how you do that? Well, then I'm gonna do that on my next record, you know? And this is one of those albums that I think was kind of pivotal 
in that in that moment in that era of, of everybody kind of like I, yeah. I won't say copying but just kind of like yeah yeah the, everybody was really yeah. studying each other's music and, and then the bomb and squad was a great example because yeah. that's definitely that bomb squad squad era hey, yo, Chuck, hey, This is um, Wilco, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Strung down your cheeks, bitter melodies, turning your orbit around. This was the record that I was introduced to Wilco through. They had, they had been a thing for years. I used to work in retail and they were Americana, but the indie rock people were digging them, you know what I'm saying? And, and so I would, uh, back then I would watch who was buying stuff and then I would look into what that stuff was. And so when I fell into this album and figured out, you know, Jeff Tweedy and his, and his, his lyrics, like I was pretty excited about Wilco for a while actually. I still am, I still check everything that they put out, but this is the one, if you're not familiar with Wilco, this is the one to listen to. It's kinda, it's, it's sad face rock in a weird way, you know? It's like good music to, it's kinda what rap sounds like today. You know, we were talking about how a lot of hip hop today, the newer stuff is kinda like, it's like, hmm, <laughs> this face, you know what I'm saying? This is like that. This is kinda like what Drake would have sounded like in in the early 90s if he was in Wilco. Come and rescue me. Take me out the club. Take me out the trap. Take me off the market. Take me off the map. There's a lot of dead people in here. You know what I'm saying? Like I was noticing Richard Pryor, mm. uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, True Goy recently passed away. Um, all of these dudes. Like uh, <laughs> <laughs> Inyo Morricone. Like, and that's mm. the thing that I guess I would say about watching this is that, you know, make make art and live forever. That's that's how you get to live forever. You don't die. You 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 become a part of of this world and you carry on forever for other people to be inspired or influenced by what you did. And so, do that. Make art. Make some art, and then show it to me. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate you Thank coming you. in today. Thank appreciate you for it. having us. Yeah, it's fun. It's gonna be okay. It'll be okay, even if you're feeling like there ain't no way, you're still with us today. It's gonna be okay, okay? I think I'm feeling alright.